Michael Baldwin has been working this story, joins us live. Yeah, uh, Rob and Trisha, can you imagine you go to bed and then you wake up and you find out that somebody spray painted your car? Well, that's exactly what happened to some folks over in Mount Healthy. Now, this is what was on their car. The letters were O S O. Now, exactly what that means? Well, we're not quite sure, but I can tell you this. The police, as well as residents, they want the people that did that caught. Dragged right there on the hood of the car, but it doesn't end there. It happened this afternoon in Crescent Springs. Our Michael Baldwin has a story you will see only on Fox 19 Now. Yeah, Robert, right outside the Home Depot here in Crescent Springs, right in this parking lot around 1 o'clock is when the incident happened. Now, what's making things harder for police to solve this is the fact that the suspect covered his license plate, so it's hard for them to find out that information. And right now, police are asking for the public's help to solve this. Michael Baldwin has a story you'll only see right here on Fox 19 Now. Michael, what happened? Well, Trisha, we're over here at the Florence police station. So the woman says this, the victim, she says this. She said, I saw a man attacking his pregnant girlfriend. She said she felt she had to do something. So what she did was she grabbed, she said, her hot coffee, and then she took it. She said she poured it on top of him. She said she hopes he learns that you can't hit women. Yeah, Rob, we're over here in front of the Boone County Sheriff's Office. We're actually in the parking lot. And according to the documents, what happened was you had a Boone County Sheriff's deputy. He was on his computer while he was driving and went through a red light. By the time he realized what happened, he caused a multi-car accident. Michael Baldwin is live in Hamilton with the story. And he says he's just not lurking in Hamilton. Michael, what else can you tell us about this? Well, right now, Trish, I can tell you, I'm in one of the parking lots that people accuse the guy of being in and staring at women. One of the things they say he would do is he would be in his vehicle, like I'm getting in mine right now, and the gentleman would have a pair of binoculars, and he would simply be staring at women as they are walking by. Michael Baldwin is live with how Shield's family is now fighting for justice. Yeah, guys, I can tell you this. Uh, since we left and came back, one of the things that the family has done is they put up this makeshift memorial right over here. As you can see, they have the uh, red balloons over here. They also have the Crime Stoppers uh, information for people to be able to call in, as well as you have the white balloons, and you also have the candles that are over there. Speaking of candles, one thing that they did was they was lighting those candles as well as they had balloons and they raised those up to the sky, all still while calling for an end to the gun violence. We are destroying our own race. Y'all cry about revolution, revolution. How you gonna have revolution when you're all gone? An emotional outburst as about a hundred people came out to the candlelight vigil. Eric had a full life ahead of him. We'll never get to see him graduate. We'll never get to see him go to the senior prom. We'll never see him get to have his children. We'll never see him get married. We'll never get to see him do anything. That's unfair to us. Eric's father was receiving support from everyone there. He spoke to us for the first time. He had the best son a father guy asked for, man. He was a good kid, man, always smiling. I'm sorry. But we can't normalize this behavior. It's a 60-year-old kid. Councilman Jeff Pastor spoke to the crowd and got choked up at times, as many looked on still in disbelief. This has to stop. There's not an ordinance. This is a cultural thing. And until we stand up and say enough is enough, this is going to continue to happen. We need education. We don't need streets. We need education. When you go to court, if you don't know how to speak, you still lost. I've been in this world 20, 30, 40, 71 years, and I'm telling y'all, this don't make no sense. After the candles were lit in his honor, it was time to release the balloons, but the message stayed the same. Violence has to stop. Guns have to come off the streets, and we have to take a stand. I mean, communities, we have to take a stand, and we have to understand where our children are at all times. All right, taking another look at the makeshift memorial, I can tell you right now, Shields' murder is still unsolved. 
Police, as well as the family, are asking that if you know anything, to call Crime Stoppers. Their number, 513-352-3040. We're live over here in the West End. I'm Michael Baldwin, Fox 19 Now. On Fox 19 Now. Yeah, Trish, we're live outside of NKU. We are told that this student no longer attends this university. Now, in my hand is the warrant affidavit where police lay out why they believe this woman lied about having cancer. This is a picture of 20-year-old Kelly Schmall. According to an affidavit search warrant, police allege she fooled people out of thousands of dollars. The warrant reads, Schmall deceived her roommate and caregiver into believing she had cancer. Police say this went on from June of 2016 through March of this year. The warrant says her caregiver and others provided her with at least $7,500 to help her with her illness. Police issued a warrant for her cell phone. They allege she used her cell phone as a forwarding service to receive and answer phone calls and text messages under the guise that healthcare workers were answering the incoming telephone calls and text messages. The news came as a shock to cancer survivors like Tracy Clancy of Florence. Because it is, it's just unbelievable that you think someone could plan that. Northern Kentucky University sororities like Delta Zeta went all out, posting and hosting events, trying to help the student they thought had cancer. In a written statement, the organization said in part, because there is an ongoing criminal investigation which Delta Zeta is cooperating with and does not want to interfere with, we are unable to comment further. Clancy believes stories like this one really hurt fundraising for people who really need it. She ruins it for other people who now will be skeptical of people being generous. In a statement to Fox 19 Now, her parents said in part, like others in the community, we too believed our daughter was seriously ill with cancer, and we are all searching for answers as to why she would participate in this deception. Now, the family goes on to say that their daughter is receiving treatment. Potential charge she could face would be grand theft charges or theft by deception. If she's convicted, you're looking at anywhere from one to ten years in prison. Now, Delta Zeta, they plan on having a fundraiser for her. That's supposed to happen on April the 22nd. We understand that fundraiser is going to continue, but they say all the money raised is going to go to an organization called Chicks and Chucks, a charity that helps breast cancer patients. If you want to read the entire statement made by her family, as as well as Delta Zeta, you can log on to our website, fox19now.com, right now to read it. We're live outside NKU. I'm Michael Baldwin, Fox 19 Now. Right here on Fox 19 Now. Michael? Yeah, Tricia, we're in front of the home where the nine-year-old was shot, and you can still see the makeshift memorial that is here where you see the teddy bears, and you see some of the candles, and the picture of that little girl with that big, beautiful smile. I spoke to her father in this very spot, and he recounted what happened a week ago today. Well, this random, or they had the wrong house, I don't know. I don't know. With his arm in a sling after being shot four times, the father of nine-year-old Alexandria Thompson spoke exclusively to Fox 19 Now. We talked right outside the house where his daughter was killed last Wednesday when three to four suspects came barging into his home armed with a gun. He described the horrifying moments that led up to his daughter's death. His little girl, who the family called Sissy, cried out for him as he was upstairs filling out some job applications. That's why my daughter was calling me and she called me. I said, Daddy! And I'm like, what? And I turn to the side or whatever and stuff. I see the guy covering her mouth with a gun to her head. Alex told me he did what any father would do to protect their child. He made a move. So I got up. I don't know what I was thinking. I got up and I went around the couch or whatever. And he like lined up and pointed the gun at me, and I guess that was my opportunity to grab the gun so my daughter could get away, and he just starts shooting crazy, and I'm trying to control the gun and get it out of his hand. I don't know how many shots was fired, but I know, I, I guess that's the one that went through my body. Hiding behind his body was Sissy. The family says a bullet went through him and hit her. 
he ran to a neighbor's house where they called 911. Burnett like Avenue. We... I have a gunshot wound. Who sh who was shot? Um, the man who lives across the street from me. I'm like, go check on Sissy. Where's Sissy? Where's Sissy? And then I guess that's when my daughter went up there to check on her. And that's when she said she got she was hit and stuff or whatever. And then she said she's not breathing or she's gone. I don't know. It just everything happened so fast. Thompson told us that he is grateful for the community outreach. We're live here in Mount Auburn. I'm Michael Baldwin, Fox 19 now.